Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connection Standalone. RAM Connection Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we are going to be focusing on the workflow for designing a fully directly welded combined connection in RAM Connection Standalone. We will now turn our attention to our RAM Connection Standalone application, where as you can see, we have several different joint types already defined. For this particular exercise, we're going to be focusing on joint number one, which is a beam column flange joint with both a shear and moment reaction imposed upon it. Now for this exercise, we are going to be assigning a fully directly welded connection to this joint. This is a combined connection and is capable of resisting both shear and moment reactions. To start the design process, we will select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the assign icon. In the connection assignment dialog, you're going to notice that RAM Connection Standalone has already appropriately set your filter to beam column flange since that is the joint type that is currently selected. Now all connections within the RAM Connection Standalone database are capable of resisting certain types of forces, whether that be shear, moment, or both, which would be a combined connection. For this exercise, we're looking for a combined connection and we're specifically looking for the fully directly welded connection type. Now that connection type is only available as a smart connection. So let's go ahead and select the smart connection workflow and take a look at all the combined connections that are available through this area. For this particular exercise, we are going to be selecting the fully directly welded connection type and we'll click on the Assign button. Here we can see that a shear and moment connection has been successfully assigned to joint number one. So we'll go ahead and click Close. Now in the joint selection area, we'll be able to see the controlling interaction ratio. To ensure that the controlling interaction ratio is being displayed in the joint selection area, you can select your Home tab in the ribbon toolbar and make sure this icon is currently selected. This is the critical load condition. This will ensure that the interaction ratio that you're seeing in the joint selection area is for the controlling load combination and not just the currently selected load case. Now in the joint selection area, we do see that our connection is currently overstressed. Our interaction ratio is greater than 1.0 and it is in red meaning that it failed the code check. So what we're gonna do at this point in our workflow is we're going to review our results for this particular connection and make changes as needed to get to a passing connection design. To start that process, click on the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and then click on your edit icon. Here, we'll be able to edit our combined connection. This will go ahead and bring up the connection pad. From the connection pad, you can modify some of your correct connection parameters. You can review your DXF drawing, and you can also access your report. Since I currently have a failing connection, let me go ahead and access my report by clicking on the results icon. Here I can scroll down, and I'll be able to see that the bottom local flange bending and the local web yielding have both fail the design checks. Now, if I'd like some additional information for the calculations, I can click on the view formulas icon, which will show me all of my code references, equations, and variables that were used to arrive at these results. So let's go ahead and close out of the connection report now that we have a little bit more information. Now, there might be a couple different ways that you can get this particular connection to a passing connection design. 
we might be able to adjust some of our member sizes, whether that be your beam or column sizes. Now, what you're gonna notice is that anything that was defined in your joint data, including your beam and column section and material information has a little blue arrow adjacent to it. This means that this type of parameter should be modified somewhere else other than the connection pad, and that would typically be in your joint data. Now for this particular exercise, we're gonna assume that we can't change our beam size or column size, so we need to find another solution. And the solution that we're going to investigate is the idea of adding some reinforcement to this connection design. As you can see in RAM Connection Standalone, we can add either transverse stiffeners or column web panel zone stiffeners if needed. I'm gonna try some transverse stiffeners and I'm going to put them at both the top and the bottom flange. Now you can see when I make that change, immediately my interaction ratio in the connection pad will be updated to reveal the status of the connection as the parameters are currently set. Here we can see that that did bring my interaction ratio less than 1.0, meaning that the design checks have been fulfilled, but it is in yellow, meaning that I am producing some type of geometric consideration warning on this connection design. Now, before I investigate that further, I'm gonna go ahead and customize my stiffeners as I would like to detail them. For me, I'm gonna go ahead and say full depth stiffeners would be preferable. And what I'm also noticing is that my stiffener width is wider than the width of my column flange. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that in a little bit. Now, once I make those changes, I can see that I'm still producing a warning. So let's go ahead and get some more information regarding that. I'm gonna again, click on the results icon I'm gonna scroll down and here I'll be able to see what's happening. So now I can see that I have provided a 3 16 inch weld on my transverse stiffener plate and the minimum recommended value is a quarter inch weld. So let's go ahead and close out of the report. We're going to adjust our weld size on our transverse stiffener. Instead of 3 16 we'll say 4 16 or basically a quarter inch weld. Now, once we've made that change, we can see our interaction ratio has now been updated. It is in green, meaning that no errors or warnings were encountered through this design process. In addition to reviewing the report, let's also take a look at what the DXF looks like. Here we can see what a DXF of our fully directly welded connection will look like we can also see the detailing on those transverse stiffeners. Now this DXF view can be exported from RAM connection standalone, and we can also save our changes in the connection pad. So I'll go ahead and click save, and I'm gonna exit out of the connection pad, and I should be able to see the stiffeners that I added appear in both the main window and the joint selection area and I should be able to see the new status of the connection design in the joint selection area, which again, for this particular connection, I did not receive any errors or warnings once I made my modifications. At this point, this completes our process for assigning a fully directly welded combined connection in RAM connection standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.